Suguru Geto and Shinobu Sensui are both perfect examples of a tragic hero and are also two of the most complex characters in all of fiction. And on the surface layer, you just see two shonen antagonists. But if you begin to peel back the layers, you come to see that these two men were once very much like the heroes we know and love. They just ultimately were victims of circumstance and would both go on to have their worldviews completely shattered. They both witness mankind at its very worst and corrupt, and it changes the once kind-hearted children into the twisted men we know them to be. But are these two men truly evil or just misunderstood? We'll find out all that and more as we dive into analyzing two of Shonen's most interesting and unique characters. Both Geto and Shinobu had very similar upbringings. They were both children with very special talents. They could both see curses and apparitions, but more importantly, they both possessed special powers to exercise these apparitions and curses. These special talents did not go unnoticed. Very soon, both children would garner the attention of not just Jujutsu Technical College, but Koenma as well, the second command of spirit world. With the help of these two entities, Ghetto and Shinobu would master their gifts and would both go on to be recognized as the pinnacle of strength. While only teenagers, Shinobu becomes Spirit World's very first spirit detective and one of its strongest warriors, while Geto would also go on to accomplish great things, becoming one of the strongest sorcerers that Jujutsu Tech has to offer. Now I want to pause the video for just a moment just to drive home the fact just how strong these two characters actually are. Ghetto at this point is approaching special grade and him and Gojo are the two strongest sorcerers that Jujutsu Technical has to offer while on Shinobu's side he's easily approaching A class level making him one of the strongest warriors in all of Spirit World and the living world. Now guys we all know how hard being a teenager is just normally. Now throw in the ability to see horrific creatures on the daily and also the powers to eliminate these creatures and save humanity is so much stress to be putting on a teenager's back. Like I said, being a teenager and navigating those waters is already hard enough. Add supernatural abilities to the mix and it makes me feel sorry for Ghetto and Shinobu in a way. To say these boys are selfless and mature thinkers is a complete understatement. At a young age, both boys had a very strong sense of justice. In the hidden inventory arc, a teenage ghetto can be seen thinking almost like a superhero would. He holds great respect for his peers and fellow man, and not only that, but he's practically dedicated his entire life and special talents to protecting non-sorcerers from evil curses that plague their life on a daily. He's a very morally just young man. When Koenma was recruiting Shinobu, he described Shinobu as having an unparalleled sense of right and wrong. It was such an overwhelming sense of right and wrong that reality was like black and white for Shinobu. Apparitions were bad and humans were good, plain and simple. Shinobu was the perfect protector of mankind and an incredible spirit detective. Both Geto and Shinobu felt like it was their life duty to protect the weak from the incredible evil that none of them could even see. The two of them put it on their backs to protect mankind from the evil apparitions and curses that plague their lives. If you didn't know any better, you would think that both these characters would go on to be the heroes in their respective verse. Two in incredibly strong, morally right young men that harness their incredible abilities for the sake of mankind. Truly a selfless act. Sadly, though, like I mentioned earlier, these two would soon go through a spiraling downfall like few characters ever do. These two characters would come to find out that the world isn't exactly how they perceive it to be, and that being a hero of mankind isn't as black and white as they thought. Although physically, both Geto and Shinobu had every tool required to be a defender of the weak, they lacked the tools mentally. They would soon crumble under the pressure. Ghetto's worldview would begin to shift during his encounter with Toji Fushiguro, and Shinobu, after years of hunting and eliminating demons, begins to question his views after an encounter with a particular demon. Now, these aren't the earth-shattering events that would flip their worlds upside down, but it was the beginning seeds of doubt in what they were doing. 
For Sensui, his meeting with Itsuki is a little hard for he himself to comprehend. For Sensui, this was a first. Not only did this demon not seem evil, but he was very human-like as well. This confused Shinobu. Like I had mentioned earlier, earlier, Sensui had such a black and white outlook on good and evil with zero sense of duality. Meeting with this unique doom demon, Itsuki, would be Shinobu's first step into his downward spiral. For Ghetto, taking on the mission of escorting the Star Plasma Vessel with his best friend and combat partner Gojo, combined with him running into Toji, would be the first steps into his spiral downfall. Now I want to stop the video again to explain something. It's very easy to understand why Shinobu's worldview would be shifted by seeing a demon that isn't exactly evil. He's been exterminating evil demons with no remorse for years. And then he meets up with an actual like human-like demon. It's easy to understand why that would mess with someone such as Shinobu with his black and white outlook at reality. But, but with someone like Ghetto, it may be harder to understand why Toji and the Star Plasma Vessel mission was his first steps, but I'm going to explain it. You have to remember, just taking on a task like that and being considered the strongest along with Gojo is already an extreme burden to have. But the Star Plasma mission and the encounter with Toji would change everything for Ghetto. Now, we know that Gojo would awaken and ultimately defeat Toji, but prior to that, Geto is forced to fight a Toji and is completely humbled, and he also thinks that he just lost his best friend and partner in Jujutsu. Now, the reason why this is so important in the beginning of Geto's breakdown is because in his world, him and Gojo were the strongest unparalleled nobody was stronger than than them but then toji comes along and not only does he kill gojo you know but he also gives uh ghetto the fight of his life and whoops him around the battlefield and literally just spares him solely because he doesn't want to deal with the curses that ghetto has ingested now later we do know that gojo does awaken and end up he does end up handling Toji, but Ghetto is left in a state that is not good for his mental health. No long, he is no longer the strongest, but not only that, his friend Gojo has far surpassed him, leaving him in the dust and almost giving him like a separation anxiety. Gojo's going on missions on his own, and Ghetto's going on missions on his own as well. His world has completely changed. He knows that there's people out there stronger than him. And he's beginning to question why he even defends the weak. The meeting with Toji would be the first step in lighting the fuse that would eventually explode into the character that we know Ghetto to become. Now, both these young men are still good people, even after the first steps I just mentioned. They both continue to do their job, their duty to humanity. It's not until mankind rears its ugly head that these characters truly crack. For Shinobu, this comes in the form of the Chapter Black mission. As Koenma would go on to say, he should have never sent a man like Shinobu on a mission such as that. A man with Shinobu's beliefs as black and white as they were had no business taking on the mission that he would soon endure. The only way I can describe what Shinobu would go on to see was pure evil, utterly despicable, humans performing heinous acts of torture and torment. Upon demons that far outweighed any act he had ever seen a demon perform on a human. Since we was forced to see mankind at its most vulgar and revolting, and it completely broke him, sending him into a complete breakdown. On that day, on that mission, Shinobu would go on to kill every human being involved, becoming a rogue spirit detective. With Ghetto's descent, it's a little more of a slow grind. After the Toji incident, Ghetto continues to do his job as a protector of the weak, but he continues to struggle with separation anxiety and the fact that it's not him and Gojo, the ultimate duo anymore. Not only that, but 
Ghetto's curse technique begins to affect him in a negative way. You see, the way Ghetto's power works is in order to gain the power of the curse that he controls, he must consume the curse in a process that he compares to consuming vomit. Ghetto is in a constant cycle of exorcism and consumption. Exercise and consume. Exercise and consume. And he goes through this all on his own. There's no one that he can share this with because nobody else would understand the putrid taste that he has to experience to gain his power. And that loneliness is beginning to wear on him. He's even beginning to see some non-sorcerers in a negative light, going as far as calling them monkeys. His mental fortitude is beginning to weaken, but for the most part, he's okay. It's not until his conversation with special grade Yuki that we truly start seeing a glimpse of the character we know from Chapter Zero. Now, I'm not going to go into the entire convo, but what's important is this is when Ghetto would first express the idea of a world without sorrow, a world without curses, and a world without non-sorcerers. Shortly after his conversation with Yuki, Ghetto is dispatched on a mission to take out a curse plaguing a nearby village. But when he gets there, he finds two innocent young girls, battered, bruised, and beaten, locked in a cage like animals by none other than their fellow villagers. The sight of this completely disgusts Ghetto. And just like Shinobu, Ghetto finally cracks and murders the entire village, saving the young girls and officially resigning from the life of a Jujutsu sorcerer. And on that day, Ghetto became a curse user. Now, something I want to point out about both these characters is they don't really recognize their descent into darkness as wrong. Actually, it's the complete opposite. They would go on to treat these events as in an enlightenment, if you will. They both truly feel they have awoken to their true purposes in life. For Shinobu, he truly feels in his heart that the world would be a better place without humans. And for Ghetto, a truly perfect world is a is a world in which only Jujutsu sorcerers exist. A world without curses. The scariest villain is a villain that thinks what they're doing is right and just. Keto is actually so just and fair with his goal that the first thing he does is kill his non-sorcerer parents. Shinobu would go on to recruit power, powerful psychics that he would manipulate into believing in his goal of destroying humankind. And Ghetto would recruit a powerful group of curse users and curses to help assist him in his plan of eliminating all non-sorcerers. The once kind-hearted young heroes are no more. What we have now is two men twisted by the evils of the world, convinced what they are doing is for the better men of the world. In their eyes, they haven't become villains, just simply matured as heroes. Two young men forced to see humanity at its most vile, and to cope with the atrocities they had witnessed, both young men shifted their goals into creating a world where they would never witness such evil again. Worlds in which the wicked humans were no more. Worlds that would be set free from chaos, worlds in which Ghetto and Shinobu were the true heroes. What do you do when your ideals and everything you believe are turned upside down, when everything you know is challenged? What would you do if you were forced to become the tragic hero? Ghetto and Shinobu's stories truly are sad to watch, and while you're reading, you actually start sympathizing with them, and you wish that they could come back and be a part of the cast and be the heroes that they were meant to be. But those heroes are long gone, and they truly did ultimately become the villains of their own story. Guys, I love the comparison of these two characters. This video was beyond fun to make. I love that Yu Yu Hakusho 
Takashi kind of paved the way for Bleach and Jujutsu Kaisen. I love all the comparisons. I love that the psychics that Shinobu recruits are pretty much like Jujutsu sorcerers. They have their own territories, which ultimately are like domains. I'm sure that Gege took a lot of inspiration from the Yu Yu Hakusho manga. And you can go through his story and point out tons of things that were probably inspired by Bleach and Yu Yu Hakusho. I am a huge fan of all three of those series. They're my absolute favorites. I love JJK. I absolutely love Bleach. And of course, I love Yu Yu Hakusho. And I love talking those three anime and manga. And if you guys do too, then go ahead and smash the like button, smash the subscribe button, because ultimately, guys, we're just here to talk our favorite things, and we would love for you to join us. What do you guys think of these two characters? Can you imagine just being a teenager and being one of the strongest beings on the entire planet? I mean, Sensui and Ghetto go on to be two of the strongest characters in their entire verse. Like, we know Ghetto goes on to be a special grade, and we know that Shinobu goes on to be an S-class who could very well be the strongest character in the entire series with... Um, his use of sacred energy. Anyways, guys, I love talking these stories. I love talking them with you guys. What do you guys think of Ghetto and Shinobu? What do you guys think of this analysis? What would you have done if you were in their shoes? I mean, they did witness the worst of humanity. They were teenagers. They were vulnerable. And they ultimately just broke and were victims of their own circumstances. Now, I want to know down in the comments below, is there any other character analysis, like side-by-sides, that you guys would like to see similar to this one? Would you guys like to see a Kenjaku Sosuke Aizen comparison? Tell me in the comments below. Like I said, I just love talking these series. I love continuing the conversation in the comments. It's one of the main joys that I get from making these videos, and I would love to hear what you guys have to say. I find Ghetto and Shinobu to be incredibly interesting characters. I mean, Shinobu broke to the point where he had to create different personalities for himself to cope with the acts that he had to do to forward his mission. Guys, it's just insane to think about. I think Ghetto, like, kept his grounding a little more than Shinobu did. Like, he didn't completely mentally break. He just decided, you know what? I don't give a damn anymore. I'm going to destroy all non-sorcerers, and I don't care how I do it. Now, something to mention about Ghetto is the group of curse users that he recruits, he actually loves and looks at them as family. Now, with the psychics that Shinobu recruited, he does not care for them one bit. He hates humans. I mean, he himself ultimately wants to die at the end of this plan. I find it far easier to sympathize for Ghetto than I do for Shinobu. Because for Ghetto, his powers are based around cursed spirits. And for him to want to eliminate all cursed spirits and make a world of just sorcerers, in this new world, he would be the weakest because he wouldn't have access to any of his powers anymore. But that doesn't bother him. As long as he can create what he perceives to be a peaceful world with no uh, non-sorcerers, then he's going to do it. Anyways, guys, I'm rambling on at this point. I just love these characters. I love these two series. And like I said, I love talking about them. So until this upcoming week's JJK chapter, this is Sterling signing out.